So originally, if you go back to the real foundations of marketing, it was uh, really an agricultural practice. And uh, most of the concern was how do we get these, these farm products most efficiently to marketplace. And so there was a lot of focus, obviously, on the grocery industry and physical distribution. And then over time, people started to add to that. Um, and, and marketing really became just about anything you could consider as essential beyond production uh, in order to consummate an exchange with a consumer. And, uh, and this was really captured in a, a groundbreaking book by a guy named Eugene McCarthy in the 1940s, I think it was. Uh, the book was called Basic Marketing. And in it, he itemized all of these various decisions and categorized them under four headings, product, place, or distribution, price, and promotion. And that became kind of the, the, the calling card for what marketing was. It was a little bit like accountants, you know, with, uh, you know, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. Uh, it became a calling card, but really it was, it was originally designed just as a way of organizing material. Unfortunately, what happened was, or perhaps fortunately what happened was, people took that to the extreme. And marketing managers all of a sudden had this responsibility for the four Ps. And as a consequence, marketing management became the equivalent of general business management. And what that meant was if you were a young graduate looking to actually run a business, brand management was where you wanted to go. And so our best and our brightest typically gravitated in that direction if they had an interest in, in general management as opposed to accounting or, or straight finance. What happened over time, however, is companies started to realize that, you know, maybe that wasn't the best way to organize themselves. And so certain functions, certain of those areas, started to get siphoned out of marketing and given more specialist attention. Suddenly there were new product development departments. Uh, all of a sudden there were pricing departments. Clearly there were logistics and supply chain management departments. So much so that uh, a survey by IBM, I think it was about 10 years ago, when they asked the question, you know, what does marketing actually do? The only thing that came up consistently in everybody's response was promotion. And so marketing all of a sudden started to lose that general management luster. Our best and our brightest no longer went into marketing because they didn't really want to run ad campaigns. They wanted to run a business. And the money, and, and opportunity was greatest in areas like consulting and investment banking. And so marketing all of a sudden started to move in this, in this direction of, of, of promotional management. And suddenly everybody wanted to study advertising and everybody wanted to study, uh, of course, social media in the latest iteration. Um, and now all of a sudden things are starting to turn back. Uh, you know, I, I think if you look at the activity of people like David Kincaid at Level 5, you know, David wrote a book, uh, um, A Promise Consistently Kept. That was the essence of what a brand was. And, and if you believe that, then brand management had to become management of a business system. You couldn't make marketing the messenger, you know, you couldn't give them the responsibility for sales just on the basis of being the messenger when they had no hand in crafting what the message would be because they had no hand in the physical distribution, in the pricing, uh, or, or obviously in the product design. So things are starting to go kind of full circle and we are starting to see the rumblings now of, of marketing still being considered largely promotional, but the marketing perspective becoming more a general management perspective that is really embedded within the essence of business strategy. So it may not be practiced by somebody called a marketing manager, but it is, the, in essence, what brand management used to be. It had to do with accountability, uh, to be honest with you. You know, the, uh, the famous quote, uh, I, I know I'm wasting half my marketing effort, I just don't know which half. Uh, well, perhaps you could get away with that at, at the time. That was uh, uh, Wanamaker, I believe, the, uh, the retailer from, uh, from Chicago who, who coined that phrase. Uh, but you can't any longer. Uh, consumers are increasingly becoming value and price conscious. Uh, and, and as such, you just don't have room for a lot of superfluous activity that isn't truly creating value both for the organization and for the consumer. 
And we see that predominantly, if you think about it, in areas like lean manufacturing, right? Which is really the essence of lean is if you don't need it, don't do it because you're adding cost, you'll never recover from the consumer. Once that started to happen, all of a sudden you looked at marketing and you said, well, geez, all these metrics about awareness generation and trial generation, all these steps that we can move the consumer through the sales funnel, they really don't become relevant unless they're producing results. And so marketing return on investment became all of a sudden a focal point. That brings us back to the notion, if you're gonna make marketing responsible for profitability, then you've also got to give them the authority to make some calls when it comes to, uh, to things that affect profitability.